interested. This is good. Okay. Michelle, Honey, and Finca. Good morning, everybody. Okay. Good morning, Sari. Yeah. Morning, Sari. Good. Good morning. Now, some of this, okay, Honey and uh, Finca is back to back. They just uh, attended the AI. <laughs> okay. All right. So, honey, did you learn anything? You like uh, uh, genetics better? <laughs> yes, you, sir. Yeah. So you are the smartest girl in your class. You, you already learned <laughs> genetics. <laughs> okay. How about Michelle? Hello, Michelle. Okay. Yes, yeah, Michelle, this is your area. Okay. This is your area of interest. Hopefully that, you know, everybody learned something. Okay. All right. Who else that we have here? Professor Pants. Okay, let's check that. Okay, Alfonso is here. Where is Alfonso? Okay. Now, Alfonso is the four grader. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we, you know, we hope that you know, one day Alfonso uh, will strive. Okay, Alfonso, where are you? Did we see Alfonso? Yeah, Alfonso is here. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, I'm not sure that some of them maybe have something else that's going on. Whenever you're ready, uh, Professor yeah. Pan. Uh, let me share my screen. <clears throat> So uh, let's see, we last left talking about transcription translation, right? And <clears throat> the transcription translation process happens on DNA. So today we're going to look at how DNA can be arranged in our cells. And then we're going to look at how our cells copy our DNA. That way, uh, every cell that we create, in, especially with our bodies, they all have the same, same genes, the same chromosomes. So... DNA is in the un like condensed form is very long. It's hard to uh, move DNA around when we go through mitosis here in a little bit without it tangling up or getting knotted together. So we take these very long strands of DNA and we compact them together into what are called chromosomes. And chromosomes are I think it's suitcases. They're like little suitcases that are very easy to move around. And you don't uh, knot up or tie up your DNA when you do this. So what you see at the top of the screen up here, this is the, the uncondensed form of DNA. So technically, it's called chromatin. And chromatin is how we use DNA. So if you want to use it for transcription translation, it's got to be in this linear form. But when we want to move it around, that linear form could cause problems. Again, you have all this DNA in your cell. If you're trying to move it around, it could get knotted up or tied together. So we got to um, spiral it around these structures here to coil it up. And then we make this super coil that's a very tightly packed DNA, um, and that's a chromosome. So roughly one chromosome, if you were to unravel it, it would be about two meters in length. So that's just one chromosome. And we have 23 of them, we have 23 pairs actually, so 40, 46. And then all that DNA in the cell, again, it would be a, it'd be a mess if it wasn't for this chromosome structure. Uh, this is showing you a sister chromatid. So if we didn't copy our DNA every time we made a new cell, we would eventually run out of DNA because the cell would half itself each time, and eventually we'd just run out because you would, every, uh, you'd half each time. So in order to have the correct number of chromosomes, when you go through mitosis or you make a new cell, you have to copy your DNA first, and then after the copy, you split the copies up. So that's what's doing here in this page. So you can see there's one linear strand, it unravels, and then it copies itself into two, and then you have two chromosomes. And then each one of these chromosomes is called a sister chromatid. And then from here, you're ready to go through mitosis. So uh, a typical cell has 
um, two large cycles. One's called interphase and the other one's called mitosis. So with the interphase, it's the, the majority of the life cycle of a cell. So you can see here this little section, this is mitosis. We're going to focus on that today. But the big circle you see, that's interphase. And that's what the cell is in most of the time. So right after mitosis, the cell will half itself and become half the size it used to be. So with the first phase of interphase, it's called growth phase. And with growth, it goes back to real, uh, the original size. Uh, right after growth, you have a synthesis phase. So this is where you would copy your chromosomes. That way, when you half, you have the correct number of chromosomes at the end of mitosis. And then after you half it, this very short G2 phase is about preparing for mitosis. So it's like packing the suitcases and getting them ready in the same area. That way, uh, when you separate your cells, it's going to pretty much make an even cell with cytoplasm. And then this is mitosis. So not every cell in our body can go through mitosis. It's the cells that grow very good. So our skin cells do this. Our hair cells do this a lot. Our bones do this a lot. But again, not every cell can do this. So our nervous tissue, like our brain or spinal cord, really doesn't go through mitosis. Our, our muscles, they really don't go through mitosis either. It's only specific cells in our body that are able to do this activity. Um, and the issue with, you know, genetics and trying to manipulate a cell is if you were able to, if you're able to get it into a mitotic cell and the change is incorporated into that cell, if it was to copy itself, then that change is going to stay in the copy. But that's the problem is we have trillions of cells and we can't get every cell affected. And we also don't have every cell in our body go through mitosis. So, um, this, that's an issue with genetics. <clears throat> uh, so let's see here. This is showing you interphase. So this cell up here in the top corner. What you see is the nucleus in the middle. So that's all the DNA that we have. And that's in that uncondensed form, that chromatin form. This is how we would go through transcription and translation in this uncondensed form. But now we want to go through mitosis and we want to move our chromosomes around. So we take all that DNA and we wind it around on itself, and then we form these structures here, which are called chromosomes. So in the chromosome structure, that's the easiest way to move it. So this is going from interphase to the start of mitosis. So the very beginning of mitosis is a phase called prophase. So with prophase, you see the chromosomes, they condense down, and you see those X's now, which are the chromatid sisters. You see the nucleus, and it's a Again, up here you see it's a solid line, which means it's an intact nucleus. And then down here you see a dashed line, which means the nucleus is dissolving. The nucleus can't be present if we want to separate the chromosomes. So in our first phase, prophase here, the nucleus is going to disappear. And then these structures you see on the side, these are uh, objects that are going to make moving structures called microtubules. Think of microtubules as uh, a fishing pole. And they're going to cast out lines. And when they cast out lines, they're going to try to hook the chromosomes. And they have the ability to reel in the pole, reel in the hook. And then when they do, they're going to separate our chromosomes. So going from prophase to our next phase, you can see right here, these microtubules are casting out their fishing lines. And then they hook the chromosomes. And then for a very short, brief period of time, all the chromosomes are in alignment down the middle of the cell. So this very quick phase is called metaphase, and it's like the middle of mitosis. And then with these centrioles and the microtubules, again, think of them as a fishing reel, the fishing lines get reeled in, and then the chromosomes that have been hooked to them, they're getting pulled towards the fishing pole. So these sisters are being pulled towards that pole, and then these sisters are being pulled toward that pole. And this phase here where they're being separated is a very quick phase called anaphase. So interphase is actual chromosome movement. This phase here is called telophase. Telophase key characteristic is that figure eight shape. So you can see how the, the cell itself is making a figure eight. That's because the plasma membrane is starting to pinch itself into two new cells. 
Uh, and then you also see the dotted line back. So the nucleus is actually reforming now. So again, it disappeared over here with that dotted line and it's reforming over here with this dotted line. And then complete mitosis is gonna stop when the chromosomes go back to their chromatin form. So they uncondense and this is gonna be working again. So they're going through transcription translation now and the two cells have completely pinched apart. So a little bit more uh, with actual cells. Let's try to make this a little bigger. Yeah, there we go. So again, you have the that big interface, and with that big interface, it's just the the working part, and then transcription translation time. When we want to make a new cell and copy the cell, we're going to go through mitosis. So <clears throat> there's another process that sounds like mitosis, meiosis. But with meiosis, it's not copying. With mitosis, you make an identical copy. That's a good. That's a good um, thing to remember. <clears throat> so prophase again. Oh, excuse me. With prophase, you're going to have the chromosomes condensed down, so you see the X is forming. And then down here with this actual cell, you can see those purple structures. Those purple structures are the liquid DNA going into their solid form, the chromosomes. And the, <clears throat> the greens you see. That's those fission poles. They're producing those microtubule fission lines. And you can kind of still see the nucleus here. The nucleus is going to disappear in this phase. So all those chromosomes have kind of erupted out of the, the nucleus. And then we have our microtubule fission poles on both sides of the, where the nucleus was, those poles. And then these microtubules and their fission lines, they grab all the chromosomes. Again, it's all that blue matter. And then they align them down the middle of the cell. So this alignment down the middle is called metaphase. And then from there, the fission lines are going to reel in. And then what you see over here is all the chromosomes have been pulled to their opposite poles. And then with the final phase, telophase, the um, chromosomes are going to go back to their liquid form. And you also see this figure eight. So it's kind of making a figure eight. That's because that line down the middle, that's called cytokinesis. And the, pl the plasma membrane is going to be splitting into two new cells. So that, again, that process of splitting is called cytokinesis. With our cells, we do it very quickly because we don't have a cell wall. So no animal cell has a cell wall. So you can see here that plasma membrane that we looked at a couple weeks ago, that line, that dashed line in the middle, it's proteins. And the proteins are acting kind of like a rubber band. That rubber band is getting tighter and tighter and tighter around the plasma membrane. And eventually it gets so tight that it pinches the two cells apart. And it does happen in plant cells too, but plant cells have a cell wall. So with cell walls like this one here, that plasma membrane is being split right there. And then after the split, it's got to grow a new cell plate. And then the cell plate will technically, after that forms, will, have, will make two separate cells. So the cell cannot separate if or without the help of the, uh, uh, the protein, right? Correct, yes. So the uh -huh. protein itself is acting as our Again, it's um, a very rubber band-like fiber, and then it just gets so tight, eventually it pinches the cell into two. Okay. Now, under what, uh, why the cell need to split? Is, it, is that the uh, to replace the dead cell or something like that? Yes. Yeah, so there's two reasons to do mitosis. One is to grow. So we start out as, you know, babies, and we get bigger and bigger and bigger. As we get bigger, we're making new cells. So every time we grow, we're making a new cell in this process with mitosis. And then once we okay. get a certain size, we stop growing. We uh, have to repair our, our, again, our old dead cells. So we lose skin, we lose hair. If we didn't have the process here where we made new cells, they wouldn't grow back. Ah, okay. So this is the very important, okay? In the baby, you know, process to grow and also in the adult. Okay, mm -hmm. so uh, the question is this, 
what kind of you know what kind of protein is it is that that coming from our consumption daily kind of consumption of food yeah so the protein specifically is actually called actin and actin is one of our cells um cytoskeletons so it is it's quite again each cell in our body will make a little different concentration of actin but that is coming from our daily amino acid intake so yes so whenever we make proteins one of those proteins in most of our cells is going to be actin and it's kind okay. of what's holding the shell or it's what's holding the cell in its shape if it, mm -hmm. it wasn't for actin it would be like a our cells would be very flimsy so mm -hmm. the protein itself protein can be uh can be found different different protein on the our daily consumption right yes yeah so as um with proteins proteins are made up of amino acids and no matter what as long as you're getting the correct amino acids you're going to make the mm -hmm. protein no matter what yeah mm -hmm. so with meats and eggs and pretty much anything from an animal it's got every amino acid so that's going to give you everything you need for a protein if you're eating ah. vegetables you have to eat multiple types of vegetables in order to get enough amino acids for protein. Right, right, right. As long as right, you eat right. meat, though. Yeah, as long as you uh -huh. eat meat, you're good. <laughs> right. So basically, there, there is only one protein that makes the cell split. Am I correct? Yes, actin, correct. Mm -hmm. Right, right. So that everything else will be changed into amino acid. That that what I heard you said, if it is correct. Okay. So, for the baby and for adult, they'll be totally different, uh, a different objective, right? For instance, when for adult, we see that at, after a certain year, people start having a problem with their knee, okay? For the knee replacement, for the eyes, they cannot see real good, and also for the hearing, hearing loss, and, you know, is that something uh, to do with the uh, cell splitting or not? Um, so with the knee, it's according to if you, it, usually with knee in, or wearing down, it's wear and tear. And there, yeah, so the cartilage around a knee doesn't really go through mitosis as mm -hmm. well as bone cells do. So as the cartilage wears down, that's the issue is the cartilage and it, it doesn't re really repair itself as fast as bone does. And then with, let's see, sight. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So with age and sight, it's called, use, it's usually macular degeneration, which means the photoreceptors in the eye, they, again, they're right. getting old and you don't have the ability to grow them back either. So they don't really have mitosis ability as well. Right, right, right. So the ability of the cell to split, it, it depends on age also as well, right? As people age, okay, yes. over the year, you know, the ability to for the cell to split, it also get affected. Am I correct? Correct. So like with, your, uh, with skin and hair, that's a good example. Um, hair thins with age and then skin thins with age. That's because the cells have slowed down. They're not doing it as fast as previously with younger ages. Yeah. Can we sit, stimulate the cell, though, uh, as we move uh, getting older? Can we stimulate a certain cell? Okay. So for example, at least, you know, I think on average, people start having a problem when they, with you know, with the, uh, uh, they have to use the reading glasses. All right. For <laughs> instance, age 50 for example mm -hmm. now can we you know do something at least to push it you know a little like a five years later the average will be from 50 to 55 so what kind of consumption of protein that these people have to have uh, in general so this is a kind of big things you know it's only one eyes right mm -hmm. <laughs> it only affect one organ Okay, it, it is amazing. It is amazing. And then we talk, I think now in the medical field, they are talking more about the anti-aging and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Okay. 
go ahead, <laughs> Professor Penn. So, I mean, I, yeah, all this is the anti-aging thing is is pretty big topic. Um, the thing with aging is there are different hypotheses on why we are aging. Um, so, with so one of them does code in mitosis. So we have these things called telomeres, and telomeres are they're kind of markers on our chromosomes. And each time we go through mitosis, the telomeres move down our chromosomes. So when we're young, mm -hmm. they start at the very beginning. And each time we go through mitosis, it moves down a little bit. So you can estimate yeah. somebody's age based on the position of their telomeres and how close it is to their chromosome. So right. one, one way we're trying to re reverse aging is if we can get the telomeres to go in the opposite direction, maybe that could reverse aging. Mm. Because we believe mm. the movement down is causing age another yeah. reason for aging is antioxidants so with mm. the, uh, free radicals free radicals and we're trying to get rid of them with the antioxidants so the, the longer you breathe um the more oxygen you use and then when we use oxygen that creates a product called a free radical and free radicals destroy our cells they kind of mm. that's one of the hypotheses behind aging so if yeah. we're able to get antioxidants into our diets, maybe we can get that free radicals out of our body and that will not halt the aging, but slow the aging down. So that's right. another one too. Right. I think the genetic class, not only important for student or prospect who do want to study medical, it, you know, it is very important for the general public because they can avoid such a thing that will make them age faster mm -hmm. okay i think this this video okay look, look at this okay alfonso and noel you did you hear that alfonso and noel okay now this is a very challenging important and <laughs> exciting okay exciting to study this uh you know genetic all right now i'm not sure that why okay why is such an important topic will not be uh, spread to all uh, college kids or college population or high school kids so that they will have something exciting rather than to to be a YouTuber or TikTok, <laughs> TikToker. <laughs> okay, so what do you think? Is it, is it because the uh, it's difficult or it is because not, you know, it's unusual? A uh, topic to talk about is unpopular. What do you think, uh, Professor Pants? Um, genetics is, it's, I would say, on more of the difficult side because we do a genetic section in biology, the textbook classes I teach, and yes. it's it's always the hardest for the students, just because it's, it's, it's hard to see a hands-on genetics because you can't really get that in the classroom. You have to mm -hmm. do the experiment. You have to see it for yourself to understand it. And just okay. hearing it is not the best, not the best um, way to go about learning genetics. So actually yeah. doing it is the best way to learn genetics. So do you think the lab, I'm not sure that do, do we have any uh, lab that go that, that far to do um, all the genetic do, thing? We do one genetic lab for our students and uh, it takes two weeks. It does take two weeks for the whole lab to to um okay. play out. Because right. we we take um bacteria and we introduce a jellyfish gene to the bacteria, and then we have to let the bacteria grow after we add the gene. And then a week later, after we do that, uh, you can see the bacteria that did not eventually it, originally it didn't glow. Um, right. And then after we added the the jellyfish DNA to it, it glows bright green. You can see that in the lab because right, we actually right. introduced foreign DNA into a cell. Okay. Okay. So let's get the student info here. All right. Let's bring Michelle on. Michelle. Okay. Why do you think the your school, okay, your school doesn't have any, uh, any lab? Okay. You see this? This is the problem. If, like uh, Professor Penn said, yeah. if we only learn theory without a lab, okay, mm -hmm. that will hinder the ability to learn 
this topic. Okay. Why do you think that your school uh, do not have that kind of lab? Are they because of there's no money, no grant, or because they don't know, or because of the curriculum? Okay, there are three things. What do you think, Michelle? Go ahead. I think it's you actually can talk louder. <laughs> yeah, I think it's the combination of all three, sir. Because well, first of all, probably because of the lack of students equals to lack of funding. That could be one possible reason, and the other reason would be that of the curriculum, sir. Because um, the twenty thirteen curriculum actually emphasize more on theory rather than practices. I think that's okay. true. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's bring uh, somebody else here. Okay, so let's see. Okay. Uh, the other student, let's bring. Okay, the other student here. Uh, who is that? Okay. Now, Mom Helena, Mom Helena, I know that uh, you are on the on the road right now, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, Nicole, so you come from a better school, okay? Do you think that your school have a chemistry lab or biology lab? Uh, yes, they do. Okay. They do have it, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. Now let bring this. Okay, Noel and Alfonso. If you go for the SMR, okay, high school at Santa Lucia, okay, do you have? Do you think that you have this lab to learn more about chemistry and genetic and you know biology? Uh, Alfonso first. Alfonso, go ahead. Uh. Maybe on the elementary school, I don't have the the science lab. Okay, so you maybe need to go to other school, right? <laughs> they have a better one. Okay, yeah. now better school mean you know higher tuition. Do you know that? Bayar mahal. <laughs> okay, Noel, gimana? Noel, next year you will be in the middle school. Okay, do you see this? This is very important to find a school that can help you to learn better. Okay, how about Santa Lucia? You are you going to go to SMP Santa Lucia, Noel? Uh yeah. Yes. Okay. Now you will see that. Okay, at your school, they may not have this kind of uh advanced, okay, advanced thing in biology and chemistry that support the student, okay? So just be very uh, attentive here. Professor Pan tried to help everybody to learn, and you heard this from our discussion, okay? How all this genetic, okay, very exciting. It can help all uh, humanity, human problem with their eyes, okay? With the hearing loss, okay? and all kind of thing, okay? So I hope that everybody will learn very seriously. This is the opportunity. It is not for everybody, okay, that have this chance. Okay, I apologize, uh, uh, Professor Pants. This is kind to get the, the kid involved. <laughs> I understand, Never, not an issue. Yeah. So let me show you a video and then I want to talk about something a little bit more serious with um, with mitosis. So again, it's hard to under or see things that are in the cells. Most of the stuff that we have are cartoons or animations like this one. To the video, right? Or is, if this is the show? Yeah, we saw it. Yeah. Okay. Make sure my screen still. Ah, the knee problem. <laughs> mm -hmm. okay, so this guy's fell. You can see he's, he's damaged his knee, right? You can see blood and cuts. So right. we're going to be doing mitosis to fix the knee. The skin around the knee is going to start going through mitosis. And then it takes, it takes about hours several hours to go through one mitotic phase 
So about a week later, all this is going to be filled in with new skin. And all that new skin came from mitosis. Mm. Okay. All right. So we're going down the cell level. And most of the time, your cells in this phase here interphase. And then inside of the nucleus is where we're going now. And then what you see inside the nucleus is DNA, and all this DNA is in the loose condensed or loose uncondensed form, which we call chromatin. So if you wanted to go through transcription translation, you have to go through it in this phase. But again, all that, if we were to try to move that around right now, it would get knotted up and torn. So to make it easier, we're going to go through um, a coiling phase and make chromosomes. Mm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah. So this is yeah. Making copies. Mm. So it's doubling right now. Doubling. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's doubling. Okay. And then this is how we compact it. So it's going to start coiling around. Mm. And gets thicker. Right. Uh huh. And that's. A whole lot easier to move in that chromosome phase okay so mm -hmm. in the background you see the nucleus so it's still present so we're still in interphase when we start mitosis though that nucleus the purple sphere it's going to disappear because we have to get rid of it in order to move our chromosomes these guys mm -hmm. right here these are my microtubule structures so you can think of these as fishing poles and then these strings that are coming off those are fishing lines and they're going to be used to cast out grab a hold of chromosomes and then we're going to move them with those fishing lines. Mm. Mm -hmm. All right, we're still compacting. Wow. And that is our chromosome. Amazing. All right, so Mm -hmm. The nucleus is breaking apart. Again, that nucleus has to be removed in order for us to get the chromosomes away from each other. And then these two poles are now going to be opposite sides. That way the DNA goes to separate sides of our cell. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay, so you can see the those tubules, those fishing lines, they're attaching to the chromosomes and they can move them. Mm-hmm. And then very quickly, okay. they're going to align them right down the middle of the cell. And then in this alignment down the middle, that's metaphase. Mm-hmm. Okay. So once they're in perfect alignment, they'll stop moving for a little bit. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Okay, metaphase. And now we're ready to split. So anaphase uh -huh. is where you reel in the chromosomes. So those, those fishing lines are getting shorter now, and it separates the chromosomes. Hmm. And then once it makes or makes its way to the poles, that's when we're going to start the last phase, which is telophase. And then we have our cytokinesis event. So you can All see right. here this this is my cleavage furrow. So that line that you see forming, that's coming from the protein actin. And actin is acting as a rubber band. And eventually it's going to become so tight that it pinches the two cells into separate structures. And mm. then right now you can see that there we uh, the nucleus is not reformed. So the chromosomes are going to go back to the liquid form because you know, it has to be in that liquid uncondensed form for transcription translation. And then the nucleus has to be reformed in order to hold everything together. Mm. Mm. And then the nucleus came back. They're split. And then they're splitting right now. You should see them pop. And then there it goes, two new cells. And then mm. these two are identical copies of each other. You can't change the, the way the DNA is arranged in mitosis. They're just complete identical copies. Uh -huh. Eventually, that whole wound is going to seal up from new cells. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. It's amazing, isn't it? Mm. Now, the... The speed of that uh, recovery also depend on age. Okay, the uh, the older 
people are, the uh, the more time, mm -hmm. right? It takes. Yes, exactly. It uh -huh. takes, as I would say, hours longer to do mitosis the older you get. Okay. Okay. The now the question is, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, uh, I forgot what I'm gonna say now. <laughs> the yeah. younger you are, the uh, the faster your hormones. It it has it has a lot to do with hormone activity. The older you get, the slower you make hormones. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So, what will be the way how we can accelerate the process of the wound for older people? Is that any thing that we can make the uh, you know the cell work faster? So you can do diet. So if you were to give the cells more energy with your diet, more protein it should speed them up. Also, warm compresses. So warmer temperatures or warmer um, structures move faster. So mm. warmer compresses could actually help increase the rate of mitosis just by giving it a little bit more energy from external sources. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. So wow. yeah, it's, it's, it's hard though. It's, it's, it's not, Again, you're trying to replace something that you've lost, and we haven't really figured out a way to do that just yet. You can yeah, help yeah, it, yeah, but you yeah. can't replace it. This is amazing thing. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay, guys. Even so hairy, okay. Yeah, uh, you know, on my age, like you know, close to 70, I'm still kind of a uh, keen about all these things. This is what the whole world you know, is trying to to solve right now, okay? They do not want to age, okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> they do not want to have the uh, back pain, okay? Or knee replacement. So this is the kind of thing that we would like to uh, to make known for everybody, okay? So are there any, you know, any supplement in, in the market right now that will help accelerate the process of healing any um, wound. There is one that I know of. It's called folic acid. So folic acid is a required um, what's that component of mitosis. So if you were to have a lot of doctors will say if you're wanting to um, get your hair growth back or if you want to kind of increase your skin production, maybe grow or heal from a wound, put folic mm -hmm. acid or folate in your diet. And that'll help increase mitotic cells. Right. Now, Professor Pence, okay. Uh, a while ago, you go to Google, all right. Mm -hmm. Can you Google that name of the protein or name of that uh, supplement? So, so everybody now, okay, will say, oh, it is not theory, but it is real. And show how much, you know, uh, the price of that you know, supplement that people have to pay. So this is the actin protein. Um, let's see. Let's see there's a okay. supplement for it. Alfonso, Noel, dan semua ya. Ini kalian harus belajar betul-betul ini, Finca ya, okay? Honey, you guys have to really learn about this. Now, Professor Penn is trying to find the name of the supplement that people can take to help accelerate, okay, to cure the wound, okay? And you will see, hopefully, that how much money that they have to pay, okay? So this one right here, it's a protein supplement from actin. So actin is also found in muscle tissue. So it's, it's one of our key components for contracting a muscle. So mm -hmm. this company right here is using rabbit muscle. They take rabbit muscle and they extract the actin protein out of rabbit muscle. And this supplement goes for two hundred seventeen dollars. Two hundred seventeen. Okay. Jadi ya Noel sama Alfonso dan lain-lain. It costs two hundred and seventeen dollars. Okay. But if you again, now, if you eat meat though, if you eat meat in your daily diet, it should already be there. So like, they're kind of they might be kind of scamming people on that one. Right. Now. And then the other time one. That Indonesian over. money is fifteen thousand. 15,000 Indonesian money, okay? Is that in a bottle? Uh, they sell it? Yes, so it was in, they sell it in a bottle. Right. Uh -huh. Or a powder, so, probably a powder. 
All right. That make up of a uh, rabbit. Yeah, rabbit skeleton or rabbit muscle tissue. Mm. Derived from rabbit muscle tissue, 99% purity the most. All right. Why is it only one brand in the U.S.? I was wondering if it is it can sell in very expensive. Why people, you know, other competitors, other company didn't want to do this thing. 217, my goodness. <laughs> probably, yeah, probably because you can just get it from meat if you have a have a, have meat in your diet. Right, right there. Okay. So I'm not sure that how many tablet. Okay, in one bottle. It's four two hundred and fifty UC. Wow. Okay, tablet. All right. My goodness, this one day we are hoping all these kids can come up with something. Okay, that will okay cure the the uh the knee replacement <laughs> okay so they have a great future oh my goodness i you know i'm hoping you know i can come back like uh 18 years old again so i can learn all this stuff okay all right so this is all the supplement right yeah this is the other one i was talking about folic acid which is technically it goes by folate or vitamin b12 so this is a very common one i actually buy this yeah, the common um, one, yes. Mm -hmm. It ranges from 30 bucks to $5, according to right. who, now, what, what brand you want to buy. Yeah. So this is the thing, okay? This become common in the U.S. Let me ask this, okay? One of the uh, mother here, okay? Mother here, all right? I know that some of them is uh, in the, you know, student side. Okay, honey, okay? Coba tanya mama, where's your mama? Yes, sir. Ibu, okay. Ibu Lisna, ya, Ibu Lisna dengarkan. I'm, I apologize, uh, Professor Pan, saya talking in Indonesian okay. here. <laughs> ini ya, kalau Ibu lihat kan, ini di screen. Ini, ya, ini suplemen, ini vitamin. Mm -hmm. Yang ada di, di Amerika ini. Di Indonesia udah banyak juga kan? Mm -hmm. Sudah. Ya, ya. Jadi Bisa. suplemen ini dipakai supaya orang nggak nggak cepet jadi tua ibu-ibu jadi tetap cantik supaya tetap disayang sama papanya, oke? Okay? <laughs> ya, nah berapa orang menurut ibu yang mampu untuk beli ini di Indonesia hmm. yang minum vitamin? Mungkin untuk kelas menengah ya dan ke atas ya. Menengah Halo. atas. Uh -huh. Oke, okay, sekarang kita tanya Finka. Finka, kamu makan vitamin nggak? Um, jarang sih. <laughs> Oke. Okay. So, jarang mean, you know, sometime. That's what Finka okay, said. All right. Let's move on. Oke. Okay. To uh, Nicole. Nicole, kamu minum nggak? Supplement. Uh, iya, aku minum vitamin. Aha, tiap hari enggak? Iya, tiap hari. Oke, okay. all right. What about Noel? Noel, kamu makan vitamin enggak? Eh, uh, iya. Oke, okay. yang mana yang kamu makan? Oh, apa namanya? Aku mak makan vitamin C. Vitamin C, oke. Okay. Supaya enggak kena pilak kata kata ibu ya. <laughs> Oke, okay. nah ini ya, this supplement that you saw right now, okay, it contain everything, okay, it contain everything, okay, it's not just C alone, okay, but the more you have, the more uh, vitamins that you have in one tablet, okay, the more expensive it is. Okay, so it is not just vitamin C. It call it what is it? Uh, do you know, Professor Pan, that the, the pill that daily daily supplement, right? That contain everything, correct? Oh, multivit. Uh, yeah, like Centrum. Uh, Centrum multivitamins. Mm -hmm. Multivit. Yeah, multivitamin. Okay, okay, okay. 
So, okay, guys, again, this is real. This is very important. Okay. That's the reason why the, the average age of people in the US or in the developed country and developing country is different. Okay. So with the supplement, it really helps. Okay, especially if you already learn about all this genetic thing. Okay, I apologize, uh, Professor Penn. I'll just pass it back to you. <laughs> so, <clears throat> I know we talk about aging, but there is another very serious topic that goes with mitosis, and it's actually cancer. Ah. So, cancer is a disease where cells do not stop going through mitosis. So normally when you go through mitosis, your cells should have a very long period where they wait. Uh -huh. And then, and then after that long period of wait, they do another mitotic phase. So cancer cells are cells that go back to back mitosis. So once they finish mitosis, they start mitosis again. So very mm -hmm. quickly you go from one cell to thousands of cells because there's something wrong with the DNA. The DNA mutates in a cell that becomes cancerous and it no longer has the ability to wait. And then that is one big issue with genetics now is if we can get these cells back to working order, maybe put a, uh, a, a gene that causes them to go back into their wait period or a gene that will just terminate them instead of going through mitosis, we can actually help people with cancer. So right. what you see at the bottom of the screen down here mm -hmm. is a cell that's gone through cancer. So this this one cell became cancerous. And mm -hmm. then from that one cell, it's going to copy back to back to back. So mm -hmm. over here, you can see this one has gone through several phases. Right. And then now instead of having just one cell, there's about 16 cells now that have become cancerous. Mm -hmm. And then those, those cells are going to keep going through mitosis because so, each one of them can't stop. And this is why cancer cells form what are called tumors, because the tumors, they lay on top of each other and they form these large, usually oval or egg shaped masses. Mm -hmm. And the bad so thing. With... Is, yeah, this is okay. super active cell, super active, hyper. Yes, hyperactive. Exactly. It, right. it can't stop itself. It, it's It's lost the ability to control itself. And then. Um, the thing, the dangerous thing with cancer is it's going to continue to grow, but it's not going to have room to grow. So as yes. it's growing, it's right. going to have to grow into new things. And the right. bad thing here, is the cancer, if it hits a bloodstream or if it hits a, what's called a lymphatic vessel, it's carried mm -hmm. away. And then as it's carried right. away, it gets trapped and it grows there now. So right. individuals that have what are called malignant cancers is when they hear malignant that means that the cancer has left the original area it started to grow in, and now it's growing in other parts of the body. Right, and that's the right, issue right. with trying to get rid of it, because if it's growing in other parts of the body, you have to deal with every every space. Everything else. Right, 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 right. Yeah, it overgrown. It like the bushes, the bush. Okay, it go to the mm -hmm. all side. Okay, so... <clears throat> that the reason why early detection is very important, correct? Correct. The faster you find out that you have cancer, the faster they can try to get it out of you. Because if it's in one mass tumor, a lot, of, a lot of the times, according to where it is, but a lot of the time the tumor can be removed. And as long as all the cells have been removed, the cancer can be gotten rid of. <clears throat> is, there any, is there any protein? I apologize. Is there any protein that we... You know, we can use to prevent all this kind of thing. No, nothing, huh? Mm -mm. So, with again, with the, there's several reasons for cancer, but most of it comes from mutations. So, there's some sort of mutation that happens within that specific cell, and it's mm. either completely random, which mm. um, you can't you can't do anything about a randomness, or it's um, induced. And induced comes from chemical usage like smoking or alcohol or sunlight with skin cancer, there's mm -hmm. those, those, those molecules are able to go to the DNA and mutate it. So mm -hmm. if you were, you have to like prevent 
exposure to those molecules in order to stop cancer. Wow, wow, wow. So it is very unpredictable, the cancer. <clears throat> yeah. It is completely what about the, the, what about, okay, the same thing with the blood cancer, right? The, okay, the white cell, blood cell grow, you know, uh, grow crazy, isn't it? Okay, yeah, we, the blood cells, um, I don't think there's cancer of red blood cells, but there is cancer of red bone marrow. And then there's cancer of white blood cells. So like leukemias, leukemias. Um, the thing with those is the original cell that's producing blood, which is in the bone, that's what's cancerous. And those cancer cells in the bone, as they produce new blood cells, it affects the blood cells. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. My goodness, there are a lot of opportunity. My goodness. Cancer, we yes. Can need... There's always, always, always. A challenge. Uh, research for cancer, yes. Yes, yes. Now, how many kids in your class? <laughs> Let's talk about it, right? How many kids in your class have this, you know, interest to all of this stuff? Or did you say, oh, I have to take it <laughs> without any purpose? Yeah, not many in my class, nope. They're, oh they're being most of them being made to take my class. <laughs> yeah. Is that because of these uh, general knowledge has not been spread? How important of this stuff? I mean, my goodness. <laughs> I myself, under my 70 years old, right? My of age, I'm still kind of looking at this. My, my, my. I mean, this is a huge opportunity. Why mm -hmm. people just do not want to learn all this stuff? Okay. And we are making great strides with cancer. I know that. We've got gene therapy. So gene therapy, we right. can actually introduce the the mutated uh -huh. gene 3D, yeah. in, the, in the working gene. Um, there's also immunotherapy right now. So with immunotherapy, if we can, again, you have to code the cell and look at the DNA and look for proteins. But if you're mm. able to do that and then find a blood cell that is in an individual, you can teach mm -hmm. your own immune system to kill the cancer cells. All right, right. Your own right, right. like a cold. We can kill it like a cold. Yes, yes, yes. Oh my goodness. This is just beginning, kid. I mean, you know, more are coming from Professor Pence. Okay. I learn a lot. You know, even I spend time, it worth it. All right. It worth it. Okay. I pass back to you, Professor. I think it's a good stopping point today because uh, we can I'm, I can continue on with cancer next week because we haven't even talked about chemotherapy or radiation or again we can look into immunotherapy, but the there's plenty of opportunities for cancer research because it's not going away and that's something that affects millions of people every day. Yeah, yeah, that is true. Now, to my surprise, okay, to my surprise, the U.S. lack of postdoc, postdoc, okay, that doing research mm -hmm. in this kind of thing, okay, every now and then and even daily, I got all this pop up on my cell phone that say Harvard, okay, MIT, and some in the European, Germany, Sweden, and all of that has Okay, 60 to 200 postdoc position unfilled. Unbelievable. Okay, mm -hmm. why people that complain, I cannot find a job. My goodness, look at this. Okay. We have all this kind of opportunity, but I think we do not have. Okay, people are more like to be a talk, you know, TikTokers, okay, YouTubers, not learning mm -hmm. about biology and chemistry. And suddenly we have all this you know, position open, unfilled, unbelievable. So kid, all right, children, you have a great opportunity by looking and doing all this what Professor Pence, okay, just talk about. Basically, okay, if you want to have a better life, okay, in the future, okay, you, it is advisable for you to, continue this STEM, okay? A STEM study. Okay, Alfonso, STEM, S-T-E-M. What that stand for? Artinya apa STEM? 
<laughs> ya, lihat di YouTube. <laughs> Oke, okay, Finka. Oke, okay, STEM apa artinya? S T E M, honey. Oke. Okay. All right. How about Nicole? Nicole, STEM artinya apa? Kenapa, Sir? Yang ini, gitu. yang sains teknologi gitu. Sains teknologi yang tuh, yo. STEM stand for Science, Science. 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 Science Technology and Mathematics. Nah. Yeah. Okay. Jadi harus pilih STEM. Okay, if you want. Okay. If you want to have a great future and help human, help humanity. Okay, you have to have this. Okay, learn more on this. Okay. All right. I think we have we have to pass that the last three minutes to Professor Pence. Okay. <laughs> um. I don't say. Uh. So I guess plans for next week. Um. We'll pick up with cancer, and we'll look at some. I got okay. I also have. I was wanting to do that too, but I guess it, I didn't make it to. I have some examples of images that I've taken in labs of cells in mitosis, so we can look at that too and see if y'all can identify the phases based on an actual cell. And yeah, we'll just continue on with mitosis next week. Yeah, yeah. Here is my question, Professor: Is there any way we can bring some of these talented kids to Colombia? <laughs> I mean, maybe <laughs> they are. Uh, yeah, this is like, the thing. Okay, mm -hmm. from your experience, the kid in your class, all right, they just take it because of the prereq, prereq to mm -hmm. be a nurse or something. They not really would like to do all this stuff for the career. Okay, so what does mm -hmm. it mean? The U.S. will have a problem, okay, of facing issue with people that doing all this research. Okay. Not because the interest is not there. Most of them try to do something else. Okay, that's what I always think in my mind. How can we bring this like Alfonso? This is still a fourth grader. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so the country need kid like you know like the one that are you know attending this class. Okay, that's mm -hmm. always my dream. If we have a slot that we cannot fill. Why can why we waste that slot? Okay. For instance, if your lab can accommodate like 10 students, mm -hmm. which is only you know five actually attended, we have wasted five spots. Five seats. Mm -hmm. that we can bring it. Okay. So maybe we have a lot to do. <laughs> <laughs> What is your reaction on that? Um, I mean, they they're showing way more interest than again my students are. The thing is, I don't know. I don't know if we have any younger students at Columbia State though. I think our youngest are in high school. Right. So right. Mm -hmm. right. right. Yeah. So this kid need to be. You know, they do need to be. Uh, this is the thing in the U.S., okay? If you're talented, if you're talented, it doesn't matter what your age, you can keep on going to take classes mm -hmm. at the university. True. But that is not true in developing country. They have to go and waste years and years, you know. <clears throat> so basically, the talented need to go uh, tango with untalented, untalented students, okay? That's mm -hmm. a waste of human investment. Hey, uh -huh. okay? Yeah. So, so hopefully that TIS, okay, like I said, we will get more, okay, funding or donation, and we will have different, totally different approach on this, you know, issue or education issue, okay. So, I better stop here because it's nine or one already. <laughs> I know you get something else going on, <clears throat> okay. Yeah. So, but then after you leave, I would like to talk with this kid to motivate them. Okay. I also bring their mom. Okay. 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 
So you can be here when I'm talking about in Indonesia. <laughs> I think I'll jump out. Okay, right, okay. You have a good week. I'll see you next week, okay? <clears throat> okay, everybody say thank you to Professor Pans. Okay, wave your hand. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Yeah, kita masih kumpul ya. Jangan keluar dulu. Ya. Kita masih di sini ya. Seheri mau ngomong ini. <coughs> okay. Noel, mami kamu ada di situ, Ibu. Oke. Okay. Belum ada. Ibu mana? Panggil Ibu. Oke, okay. kalau Hani sudah ada. Oke, okay. Alfonso, Ibu mana? Finka, Ibu mana? Lagi okay. keluar, Sir. Lagi tidur. Ada <laughs> tidur ya. Iya, <laughs> jam 9. Oke. Okay. Ya. Yeah. All right. Jadi ya, seheri akan stop dulu recording ya. Okay, let's see. Stop recording dulu. Okay. All right. So, Sehari akan stop recording. Okay. Okay, see. Okay. Oke, okay. okay, sekarang si Harry akan stop recording ya.